Okay, so let's have a look at the controller. Uh, the first thing, obviously, to do is connect it to power. If you're going to use an AC power adapter like me, make sure that it's at least five amps because it will need it for when the glow plug first heats up. If not, you can use a 12 volt battery, one for, that's at least 12 amp hour. And obviously you've got to find a way of charging that each time. So to a solar panel and a control panel will be fine. If not, you can get a battery charger. First step is obviously turn it on. This is how it will look. Now it turns on with a zero, 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 zero look to it. This is what's expected. Now let's look at the first option we can do. So let's have a go at setting the time. So to set the time, spanner, okay, hold. And you'll notice that you get the settings gear at the top and you've now got the flashing number. So if we set it for, let's say 1210. So we go up one there. We click OK. We go to 12. OK. Twelve ten. OK. And then to get out of this, you can just press the on off button. To draw fuel through the line, you hold the spanner and the down button. It then flashes up with this number. Now, the 0 20 means 20 seconds for most fuel lines. That's probably enough. I can change this amount by going up and down. Obviously, if you go down to zeros, no more. If you press the spanner key, it goes to the next bit. So let's say I want, I don't know, 80 seconds. After that, it will automatically take it through to the, the hundreds for you. So my recommendation would be to start at 20 seconds and then see how much fuel draws through. So if you press then the OK, it starts drawing. You can see this comes up. I'm gonna stop that because mine's already there. If you draw too much, all that will happen is that fuel starts to leak out, okay? You, you don't really wanna draw too much. Obviously, if you don't draw enough, the thing won't start up properly anyway, and it will lead to one of the error codes. But let's say you got to the zero and you wanted to go again. You would just span it and down again, and it will default to the 20 seconds okay to start okay to stop and then just the on off button to get out of the whole system again you've drawn the fuel through so now you can actually start up your machine let's face it you want to know it works before you start fiddling around with all the other timers and the settings so so to start it's very simple press the on button that's it one short on turns it on now you'll see the glow plug Thing comes on that's to show that the glow plug is heating this is when it draws the most uh, amps remember this has got high amps because you're on a low voltage with that in mind if you're connecting up to a car battery or something like that make sure you use a thick enough wire if you're not sure where to get the connectors um, the best place if you live near the coast like I do a chandlery will do them if not you try your screw fix and your tool station or your local battery center, they're normally really helpful with showing you what you need. The battery center will also, if it's a good one, be able to recommend a charger for your battery, um, even solar options as well. Now, there's a very high pitch sound. I say very high pitch, it's not loud. It's just very high pitch. It will scare all your rodents away from your workshop. And that's just as it starts firing up. It's like a it's almost like a jet engine sound. That starts firing up. You should now hear the fuel pump starts ticking. The light, light is now on and it's ticking away and it starts to draw in. Your fan's going round showing that it's circulating. You've got your two bits here showing that air is coming in, exhaust is going out and we're up and running. So now what can you do? At the moment it shows 16 degrees. There's a number of ways of changing the settings on this. So the main one I use, because I'm used to doing it by sort of a power level, not by a temperature. I just click up and you can go through your power settings between one and 10. Once you're at that, you don't need to press anything else. It's taken it there. It might not straight away go up on power on this because at the moment it's still in its first heating phase. You should now start to hear the click going a bit more and the diesel heater itself starts to sound louder. You can see these lights going up more and it starts to power up. Now it's still showing 16 degrees here. That's just showing the temperature of what this is recording. Hopefully you can hear now it's 
blasting away. Obviously the clicks increase and so does the fan. Now uh, let's say we want to lower it. We just click that down. Now these do have a temperature feature, but it's, it's a little bit rubbish to be fair. It's, it's almost pointless. Um, certainly with the way I've used them. And please, if you know better, comment down below. But it doesn't mean that it will turn on and off and keep to that temperature the whole time. So I find the temperature setting a little bit useless. So to actually change the temperature, your target temperature, hold the two down together, the up and down. There we are. And it gives you a temperature. You can now set this up. For what real reason? I have no idea really, because it doesn't seem to do much when it either reaches the, down to the temperature or up to the temperature. So in many ways for me, it's a little bit pointless. Output heat, that's again showing the temperature of the room. That's the time and you go back through. That's your battery voltage. That is quite handy to have. And then obviously you go back through them. 13 degrees is the desired temperature. We're back to engine temperature. 16 degrees is what the room is currently and the time. And we just go through them. If I go here again, that's put me back to the power mode. If I hold the two down again, that puts me through to the temperature mode. You can put that, let's say, I don't know, 21. Press OK. It flips straight out. So you think, oh no, it's gone. That's the current temperature. That's the time. That's your voltage. And then that's your desired temperature. It's, um, there's no way of really easily telling what's your desired temperature and what's your current temperature unless you're actually using it. It will always default back to your temperature there. Suddenly it fires up and just blasts some cold air through, try and clear it. Now, if you've been running at a really high temperature for quite a while, it will do that a couple of times and can take up to about three to four minutes to go through its whole cycle. So at this stage, if we do want it to start it up again, I'm afraid you have to wait for this clearing phase to be done. So to pair with the remote, you simply need to press the spanner and the up button at the same time, hold it, it'll flash with PE. Once it does, click the off button onto the remote and it's now paired. So to know it's paired, you can click the on and it'll come on. Now there's two timers, one to bring it on. So to get to the timers, we do like we did to set the clock, the spanner and the okay button. We then press the spanner again, Second one's the on. So this isn't a clock, it's a timer. Think of it as a timer function. So if we want it to come on in five minutes, four minutes, let's say, we click that, four minutes, done. Now there is a second timer then that will turn it off. And you think of that as in or after time. So we'll do zero, 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 five. You hold down the on and off button for clearing back to the menu. Now with this set, it means that it was going to come on in however many, many minutes. I think we set four minutes and then it'll go off after five minutes. It is worth noting that if you don't want a turn off time, you just don't set the second timer. Only do that if you want it to come on for I know, 10 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that. This function's really good if you want to set it to come on like two hours time, something like that. It's not so great if you're thinking, you know, night before, trying to work out your hours and all that. It's a nice function to have, sort of a delayed on function. The second setting isn't how many minutes it's on for, it's how many minutes from the time you set it. So let's say you want it to come on in an hour's time for an hour. The first one, you would put an hour. The second one, you would put two hours because it's then, it's gonna go off in two hours time. They're both timers from the point that you set it. So whilst it's in its heating phase, certain actions won't work on it in terms of you can't set the time whilst it's in a heating phase or a clearing phase. Everything that you can do on your remote still works, so you can turn up the temperature. Now I've looked into the efficiency of these. Obviously there's a lot of heat that you'll notice comes out of the exhaust. 
Um, I've actually built a heat battery storage that if you click on the link above now, you can watch the video for. This makes it a lot more efficient, about a third more efficient in terms of heat. It depends how you want to use this, where you want to use it, but uh, check it out. Now, this is a tri-clicks model bought from Amazon in the UK. Um, I've got two of this model, one bought just after Christmas 2022 into 23, and this last one I bought mid February 2023. Both come with this remote, which is different to a lot of the other remotes that you'll actually see on YouTube. I'm not sure if this is a new style, a different one, or you know, just a variation. But a lot of the YouTube videos focus on the one that's got more of the sort of cog top, and a lot of them functions are very different to this one. So when it's in the power mode, if you use the remote and you click up, it will go up the powers. It'll also go down the powers. The power button, now if you click the power button once, nothing happens. If you hold it, that's when it turns it off. Now to turn this off, you can't just turn it off and then pull the plug. So in many ways, you can't turn it off and then turn it off at the wall or disconnect the battery. You have to let it do in its clearing phase. Okay, this is to protect the whole unit itself. So you turn it off, you leave